Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at correlation analysis with Python. Let's get started. So, first off, let's go on and import our our basic imports. So, import pandas as pd, import numpy as mp, import seaborn as sns, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and import yfinance as yf. And we're going to try our best to make this um, very generalized. Okay, so let's go on and actually create up two variables here. And this is just going to be to come correlation analysis between two stocks. So let's say stock one is equal to, and here, um, let's do uh, WTI. And this is basically um, crude oil. Okay, and let's do uh, stock price two here. And we'll say something like DAL, and this is uh, Delta Airlines. Okay, and then let's go on and grab our data. So df dot, not df, uh, yf dot download here. And we want um, a list for stock one and stock two. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to make it nice and generalizable in the future. So that, for example, you ever want to change this up or Later on, maybe we want to make interactive graphics with it or anything else. We'll have just these two variables to contend with later on. So we can maybe even do have it grab multiple. I think we even did an example like this before. Um, so let's go on now and take a look at the head of the data. OK, and notice here we're missing uh, quite a few for some of these. And so then let's go on and say something like a df dot tail what we're missing here uh, and we're not missing anything at the tail so then I guess we can go on and maybe let's actually just do some uh, cleaning up of the data so df dot drop in a in place is equal to true um, and then we'll also go on and let's just go on and plot the data so df dot plot and we want our subplots to be true. Let's do a fig size here of something like 10 by 6. Let's take a look. Whoops. And so notice here you see you see that there's definitely a lot of values here. So let's actually go on and maybe just look at the mm, adjusted close. Okay, and we'll, we'll deal with just the adjusted close data. Okay, so we see here that there's definitely uh, some trending going on in each of these. Um, so maybe depending on n, we, we deal with the data. Um, we may have a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation at all. Um, so again, so for example, notice here, there's this big drop. This is again, the start of COVID. Okay. So, and again, people, they're opening back up here. So maybe we want to cut it off at maybe 2020. Okay. And then, um, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll just do 10 years. So like 2010 to 2020 or something like that. So that we can have a little bit of a clean data set in here, as we can see. Um, so the next thing that we want to do. Again, so we can go on and take a look at the data again. So we can do uh, df dot, oh, you know what? Um, let's go on and set this just to the adjusted close. Uh, so we can do uh, loc here, and let's say that we want it from 2010 to um, 2020. And let's do something like dot plot uh, secondary. Yeah, secondary y here is going to be stock two. Uh, and so if you notice here that these are, they're, they're almost on the same wavelength, okay? So they're almost on the same y axis here, but not quite. But what we're going to do is have our second y axis over here. So for example, if this was like, maybe if we're comparing, uh, this delta to the Dow Jones or something like that, then you would want to do this to be able to compare the two, but it can be very, 
very tricky to do this because sometimes it can be a little bit manipulative when you're saying, oh, look, they're on the same uh, same size or whatnot, but that's not necessarily true in this case. We're just wanting to see if they correlate in some way. Let's look here. Um, no, and I want it to be up to, so let's see if I change this to 2019. There we go. So notice here that we definitely have um, some crossing here. Uh, and so this is taking us all the way up through the end of 2019, starting at the beginning of 2010. So that's why, again, we'll see this uh, 2020 here, because it goes all the way up to January 31st of 2019. And we'll, we'll do this just because it gives us a nice, clean data set. We don't have to deal with these crazy uh, pandemic issues or anything else. And we can do that maybe in another uh, episode as well. So again, we're using this uh, loc in order to grab from our um, our index. So again, if I add here and I do something like uh, df dot x, we take a look here. Notice that it's in this date time format, and we can grab a specific day if we want to. So if we wanted to go from like uh, 05, 05 or something, we can. Um, and this, this again, it doesn't really help us in this instance because this goes all the way through, but we'll do something. Um, but if you'll notice, it actually did shorten it. So again, I can do the same, but we'll just, we'll just cut it short here. Um, this is what we're going to want to be looking at. So now let's go on and do returns. Okay, and so first thing is I'm going to do df is equal to... Um, df dot loc here of 2010 through 2019 and let's actually call this uh, small um, and then let's go on and actually calculate up the returns here and so the returns are this is basically we're going to be doing the logarithmic returns so this is going to be uh, again it's going to be very useful for us to see how let's say maybe volatile uh, they are to see these volatile clusters uh, over time. High periods of volatility in a stock are going to be accompanied usually by uh, some other type of phenomenon. Okay, so we'll, we'll, let's just take a look and see what it shows us. So mp dot log here of df small divided by df small dot shift one. And let's go on and uh, drop in a place is equal to true. Uh, and the reason that we're doing this is because this is going to give us a missing value with the shift here. And then let's go on and take a look at the returns dot plot uh, sub plots is equal to true. Big size is going to be 10 by 6. And so notice here now we get this um, looks more uh, noise, just like white noise almost. OK, we, again, we have some spikes here and there, but overall, there's no real trend or anything else in there. And that's what these logarithmic returns are going to do. Uh, so let's also go on then and take a look at a nice scatter matrix. All right. So it's going to come in handy for these visualizations. We'll be able to look kind of like at the correlation type between these two, as well as let's add in maybe um, some histograms as well. So we can do this in a couple different ways. We can use matplotlib, we can use Seaborn, uh, but let's go on and actually just use uh, the scatter matrix function from uh, pandas. So let's do alpha is equal to 0 0.2. We want the diagonal Here to be a histogram. Again, you can put it as maybe a KDE or something else if you if you're so inclined. So let's also do a histogram with our keywords here. Um, we want the bins to be of width 35. And then we'll say fig size here is going to be 10 by 6. Again, because it's a nice size for us. Um, so again, we're wanting to have our nice 
Here it was, we're looking at the returns. Again, we're changing the opacity to 0.2. Again, what this is for is for these so that uh, we can actually see some of the dots in here. If we got rid of this, it would just look like a big, uh, a, a big bunch in here. Um, and as we can see that there's not really a whole lot of correlation in either of these. Uh, there may or may not be a positive correlation, but I'm not sure. We'll have to take a look here in just a minute. Um, if it was going downward, we'd have a negative uh, correlation. If it was going upward, we would have a positive correlation. So let's go on and see if we can uh, maybe use like an OLS regression to take a look. So here we'll do... Um, an OLS regression. And this is only going to be between the two. Okay, so this is again just an ordinary least squares analysis. And it's going to be great to kind of show a nice scatter plot like this that we had up here uh, with a regression line between the two. And that's going to kind of help us see whether it's a negative correlation or a positive correlation between them. So let's go on and do that. So first off, let's do a regression mp dot uh, poly fit and again we could have done this with scikit-learn or something else but let's just use uh, what we what we have already imported with us and we can do very quick stuff with this so we want stock one and we want the returns of stock two and again notice that this could be you can change this to anything that you want and this is again since this is a poly fit we can just change the de the degree here, so currently we want an OLS, so a linear model. So it's gonna be a degree one. Um, you want different type of polynomials. You can just keep changing these as you go up, depending on what type of uh, method you think that you're going to be needing. So let's set up our axis. We want the returns dot plot kind. Here is going to be a scatter. We want X here to be stock one. Y to be stock two. And then we also want our fig size here. Again, let's, oops. Again, we'll do a 10 by six. And then let's actually go on and plot this out. So axis dot plot. And again, we want the returns of stock one. And then we want the polyval, okay, of our regression, and then of returns, okay, with respect to stock one. And then let's go on and say we want this to be red, and we want this to be with a line width of two, so it'll make it nice and fat. Oops, and it did not like my poly, oh, whoops, and it's because I misspelled polyval. Polyval. And so now we see here that there is definitely a positive correlation happening here, though it is definitely not a strong positive correlation for our crude oil prices and our airline uh, stock. Uh, usually, these are, would be probably in the negative, depending on the um time and date and everything else but this is this is kind of a nice uh thing to see so let's see if this is actually uh correct or not based on the actual correlation okay so now to actually run the correlation so we have our returns dot core and we can run this to see oh yep it does have a slight positive correlation here so a uh, 0.15, okay, point, yeah, 0.15 positive correlation. So it's not very strong, uh, but it's not nothing to sniff at either. So let's go on and see about potentially providing um, some, let's look at this, how this does this over time, okay? So what does this actually uh, measure this? We're measuring it directly. So we have our two measures uh, to consider. We have a static one. Okay, which is this, uh, and we need to take into account all of the data, and then let's also do a rolling 
uh, correlation. Okay, so this is currently just uh, all the data. Okay, and so we're going to do here, this next one is a rolling correlation. And we're going to do this over a fixed window of time. So maybe let's do like half a year or something. And let's also go on and see whether this is going to provide some support uh, for the fact that uh, both our uh, airline prices or our airline price and our stock crude oil is positively correlated over time. So let's go on and do that. So first off, axis is equal to our returns of stock one dot rolling in our window. And again, we said we want it to be about half a year. So let's do 252 dot correlation. We want it for our returns of our stock two. And then we're going to dot plot of our with a fig size here of again, and by six. And then we want to actually plot that out with an axis horizontal line here. That is the returns of the correlation. Dot I loc, and we want in here to be of zero and one. Again, we're just grabbing that singular value of the correlation with a color of red. So now let's take a look at this. And we can see here that we have our nice horizontal line with our correlation. And again, you can see that the, uh, the correlation itself does go up and down over time. Again, remember, this is the correlation, the rolling window correlation between the two, okay? So it's definitely not static over time because again, here is that just singular correlation number that we got if we just run the whole thing. So it definitely does move over time. If you guys like this video, please make sure to comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.